Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith, Director of Digital Ministries at Watermark Church in Dallas, Texas. And I'm here with my friend, Todd Wagner. How you doing? Good to see you, Rick. We got a Real Truth Real Quick. Springtime. Spring is in the air. Yes, it is. Short sleeve shirts. It's, it's, it's coming. I, I transitioned from sweaters to, then yes. to long short sleeve. Well, let's get right into it. So, should Christians baptize their baby? That's where we're going today. All right. Well, let's dive in because this is a multi-layered question. There's a lot of theology involved with this. What's the purpose of baptism? What would you say? I'd say it's an outward sign of inward expression. Okay, it's an outward sign of a an inward ring. faith. Exactly. My ring doesn't make me married. My marriage happened when I made a covenant commitment to my wife, and as an outward expression of that, I wear this ring on my left hand. That is the purpose of baptism as well. The scripture says, in response, specifically in Acts 2, on Peter's uh, sermon on the very first day of Pentecost, uh, the people respond, in fact, Let's just do it. Let's give them some real truth. Let's read it. In Acts chapter 2, we're at the very end of Peter's sermon. Uh, it says, now when they heard this, this is verse 37, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do in light of all that we've just heard about the graciousness of God, his provision through Jesus Christ, the fact that we participated in the rebellion against God by rejecting his Messiah? What shall we do? Peter said to them, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Okay, let me just stop right there, because there's some verses that come after that, obviously. So, if your child has become aware of their deep conviction at two weeks, two months, two years of age, understands their deep depravity and their need to be reconciled to the God that they have been separated from through sin, and they profess their belief in Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they desire to trust in Him and follow Him, they should absolutely be baptized as a child. We have a five-week-old. He's just trying to learn to eat, so <laughs> slow down a little bit. Yeah, obviously, there's no child that does that. One of the reasons that folks do, okay, is it, it, because they continue to read. It says, after you've done this, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which, again, um, it's not after baptism that you receive the gift, but this is at Pentecost when the fulfillment of the new covenant, that the Spirit of God would dwell in you, that he would forgive your sins, um, would be accomplished. And so what you're seeing here at this moment is what really... Peter is saying is at that moment, okay, you'll be reconciled to God. You'll acknowledge that he is the good and holy God and that through Christ you can be reconciled in a relationship with him. It says in verse uh, 39 then, for the promise is for you and your children and for who all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. So let me just say this. Some people say, well, that's why we should baptize our children, that the promise of deliverance is for us and our children. If you're going to be consistent then, everybody should be baptized. Not just your non-believing children, but your non-believing people far off. Clearly, what, what Peter is saying right there is, hey, listen, the promise of salvation is for you and anybody from this time forward that will receive God's means of salvation, which is Jesus Christ. What happens is there are people that understand in what might some branches be called replacement theology, which is that the church is Israel, and Israel was always the church. And just like circumcision was the sign of uh, being inside the covenant community, baptism is now that sign. All I would tell you is that circumcision was the sign that you were given at least the grace to be raised in a home of individuals that knew God, knew of his goodness, and taught you of God's love and goodness. But there was still a time when you individually had to decide to walk with the God of your fathers. And there were many people who were circumcised who didn't walk with the God of their fathers. And there are many people who are baptized as infants that never walk with the God of their fathers. Let me just give every parent the benefit of the doubt. People that want to baptize their children, what they're saying is we desire for you to walk in the grace and be a part of the community of grace with, with which we are a part. The way you become in a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ is you profess your need for Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Babies, children don't do that. Okay, and I'm talking about the kind of infant christening that we do. It comes from a confusion about what the purpose of circumcision was and how baptism is, in fact, that sign. Uh, there's confusion there, number one. And number two, it is a sign for believers. The Bible talks about believers' baptism, not infant christening. So what a parent can do is dedicate their child. What they can do is say, Father, we as a couple want to dedicate this child to the Lord. We're going to do everything we can really to dedicate ourselves to loving this child in a way that they would want to know the God of their fathers. So, gosh, is it a sin? I would tell you it's confusing. Okay, yeah. it's not a sin. It's not best. 
and it's not clear, and it is confusing, and at the best, you could be encouraging your child to follow you. At the worst, you could be confusing your child and others that because they are your child, they're going to go uh, to heaven or be rightly reconciled to God. And we know uh, John chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 12 and 13, talk to us about how we're reconciled to God. It's not by blood. It's not by the will of man. Okay? It's by the will of God and your own personal response to the will of God. As many as received him, he gave the right to be children of God. Not as many as who were baptized or christened by the parents. So don't do it. And by the way, if you were christened as a child, you want to honor your parents, then what you want to do is say, hey, I'm going to get baptized as a believer in fulfillment of your love and intention for me. Being christened as a child does not excuse you from the responsibility you have to be baptized as a believer. Great stuff. Great stuff. Hey, if you have any other questions that you'd like us to answer, be sure to send those in. Uh, questions at realtruthrealquick.com, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.